Good morning and welcome, Peace of Christ Church of Natchez, Washington, and the world. We are in this virtual space. Welcome to Sunday Worship on this Sunday, November 8th, 2020. I am Pastor Scott. I welcome you to this virtual space, wherever you are and whenever you're watching this, as you get to uh, participate. Even if we're distant and in a virtual space, you still have opportunity to participate in worship. How do you do that, you might be wondering. Well, you can certainly uh, watch and hear and listen and to see what God is doing. And you could also follow along. Uh, if we are singing a particular hymn, you can certainly uh, find the words or, or dig into your own hymnal if you have it or search online and, and sing along. You can push that pause button at any point when we're considering prayers and maybe uh, adding your own prayers uh, in your own space by yourself or if you're around someone else also uh, sharing in worship space as well. You can be creative in so many ways as we do have uh, a service here as I will be presenting uh, the word from scripture and a message, guided prayers, and some hymns and such. There's also ways that you can be creative as we participate in ways that you can use this space and this presentation as not just something to be fed to you, but in a way for you to receive and to make your own as well as God is guiding you. So I invite you in, in these ways. I'm curious to see what, what that might uh, what might emerge from that experience. And I'm also curious to hear from you uh, in your own prayers throughout the week and in our own contact with each other throughout the week. At this time, I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship, to take a deep breath. As you breathe in, Breathe in the love of God, and as you breathe out deeply, breathe out the weariness or exhaustion or anxiety at the moment. I invite you to continue to breathe in this way. Make it a form of prayer, a breath, a breath prayer throughout the day when you're feeling anxious or concerned or worried, or when you feel like whatever division is happening right now across the nation and the world and even in our own lives, our own hearts, with our own neighbors as well that we may pause through these breath prayers to see everyone, to see what God is doing, to see who is in front of us as we engage our neighbor. And instead of leading with division, we lead with the unity of God as the Spirit of God unifies us. So welcome to worship. Please join me for today's call to worship. The God of our ancestors has led us to this place. We are witnesses. We have sworn to teach God's promises to all generations. We are witnesses. The time is coming when Christ will come again in glory. We are witnesses. Let us tell the world of God's faithful love. We will witness and worship together. Amen. Our opening hymn is the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, just let us die to make men free. While God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. He is coming like the glory of the morning on the wave. He is wisdom to the mighty, he is honor to the brave. So the world shall be his footstool and the soul of wrong his slave. Our God is marching on. 
Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Please join me in today's prayer of confession. God of mystery, we want to stay awake and be ready for your surprises, but we are tired and overcome with the usual routine. We want to wait patiently for the fulfillment of your kingdom, but we are frustrated by our need for immediate gratification. We want to believe your promises from ancient days, but we are overwhelmed with doubts. Come to us again, O God. Awaken us with your unexpected grace. Shock us with your daring mercy. Lift us up from lethargy and set our feet on your path once more. Let us continue with a moment of silent confession. Hear this assurance. Encourage one another with these words. We will be with the Lord forever. God's promises are never forgotten. Do not grieve as those who have no hope. Our hope is in God, and not even death can overcome that hope. Enter into God's mercy and love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next hymn is, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. I love thy kingdom, Lord, the house of thine abode. The church, our blessed Redeemer, saved which his own precious blood. I love the church, O God, her walls before thee stand. Dear as the apple of thine eye engraven on thy hand. For her my tears shall fall, for her my prayers ascend, to her my cares and toils be given till toils and cares shall end. Beyond my highest joy, I prize her heavenly ways, her sweet communion song vows her hymns of love and praise. Sure as thy truth shall last, to Zion shall be given the brightest glories earth can yield and brighter bliss of heaven. Let us continue in prayer. God of holy anticipation, you have promised that you would return at a time unknown to us. Make us ready so that when you return, we might be welcomed into your kingdom with open, with open arms. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. And as we turn to your scriptures, we know that ten lamps are gathered with oil enough, enough for all. Ten lamps are gathered, but five are empty, showing careless disregard. Ten lamps gathered, five ablaze with oil abundant enough to share. Ten lamps gathered, five lifeless when laziness and greed collide. Ten lamps gathered, how many will burn tonight? Creator God, giver of oil, hear us as we pray for generous hearts to share oil with our neighbors. Creator God, giver of oil, hear us as we pray the vision necessary to leave our comfortable seats in search of oil, that anointing and healing oil. Creator God, giver of oil, hear us, hear us as we pray for forgiveness for the ways our selfishness and our apathy collide. Ten lamps gathered with oil enough for all. Come, children of God, into a sacred circle when sharing creates abundance and no one leaves hungry. We pray for all the people. We pray for those lost and abandoned. We pray for those who have given of their time and even their own service and sacrifice. 
We bring all these prayers forward to God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that very name, Jesus, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is Be Still My Soul. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief for pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, God faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend. Through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as in ages past. Your hopes, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know. The Christ who ruled them while he dwelt below. Be still, my soul, the hour is hastening on, when we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone, sorrow for God, love's purest joy is restored. Be still, my soul, when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed we shall meet at last. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. Then, at midnight, there was a shout Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with them into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Hey, wake up. It's time for the sermon. What do you mean, wake up? This is prime nap time. How can you sleep at a time like this? You might miss something important. Nah, I've been hearing the same old stuff my, all my life. But this is God's word. Don't you know this could change your life? Change my life? Uh, 
I must have missed that part. Exactly. We've promised to serve God, to be witnesses with our lives. How can you witness when you're asleep? Well, I guess it might not hurt to pay attention just this once. Pay attention today and every day. This is the word of God. And you never know what might happen. Ah, yes, the sermon. This is the moment that the worship comes to. Or is it? As you heard from that little exchange of dialogue there, it's, hey, pay attention, the sermon's coming. Here's what the worship's all about. For some, it's the pinnacle of worship. And yes, it is important as we look at the word of God and we look at the message surrounding that word and how the spirit moves any given week to how this message is delivered. It is important. The sermon is, but it's one element of worship. It's one of many elements of worship. Think of all the ways that we might see God at work and participate, how we participate in this relationship of church or uh, with God and with each other as well in community. There are so many ways to seek and to discover God and to offer expressions of praise and discovery. And that goes inside a worship hour or two and it extends to the rest of our days and the rest of our weeks as well, each week, and in every week of our lives. And so it is important, but we also want to be sure that when we wait for the Lord, when we wait to hear that shout that we hear from scriptures, and to wait for what God is doing, we participate, we take action every day in the choices we make and the choices we make to do something or not do something, to be active or inactive. And in all we do then, we ask ourselves, what is it that we do in the name of Jesus Christ as disciples of Jesus Christ as well? And so we uh, will take a look at that today, noticing that that truth extends with all our time and our work, and it affects the very fabric of our lives as disciples of Jesus Christ. So we work, we live into this promise of, of what... God will do as God will fulfill his promises. And then as we look at engaging in activity in the kingdom of heaven here and now, that's part of our story and our ongoing consideration. Now that phrase kingdom of heaven is often used uh, sometimes as noted earlier in Matthew. Matthew prefers kingdom of heaven perhaps more than some of the other gospel writers. Uh, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God is often what we hear. But kingdom of heaven is a, uh, is a Jewish formulation that's intended to avoid the name of God, not uh, because there's any sort of disconnect with God, but rather because there's such a respect and reverence. And so kingdom of heaven is often used instead. And Matthew is largely speaking to a Jewish audience, not just a Jewish audience, but very much mindful of that. And so kingdom of heaven is often used, and that's the phrasing that we have looked at as we've looked at... Um, many verses and passages from the Gospel of Matthew. Additionally, the kingdom of heaven is directly linked with the ministry of Jesus and the continued ministry of Jesus' disciples in Scripture and, of course, even today. It's work that contributes to the holistic transformation, physical, social, relational, spiritual. That holistic transformation of brokenness uh, into something new. And that's at the heart of much of Scripture, much of the Gospel, and today's passage as well. That same thread continues in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. God's grace extends to us even when all fall asleep, as seen in Matthew 25, 5. Now we are called to be watchful, and when we fall short, uh, we know that that's not always the end of the story. When we fall short, we might be stopped and asked, who are we and whose are we? And how have we used our time in a way to wait with activity, to wait with preparation, not just sitting idly by? Those who are prepared and unprepared fall short, all fall short, as they all fall asleep. Notice that in today's passage. However, it's the five of the ten bridesmaids who are prepared, who are seen in a more heroic light, having walked that path, that way of Jesus, that way of righteousness. 
And we can know that when we look at ourselves and others in these two different camps, those who are prepared and those not, we know that all fall short and that God's grace is still available. Furthermore, as we continue in our belief and our walk with Christ, and when we discern how we use our time and our own lives, we can be reminded to be faithful, to be repentant, and to seek growth in discipleship. That discipleship, being a learner of Jesus, of the way of Jesus. A learner and a practitioner of the way of Jesus is discipleship. So if and when we all fall short, and if we've focused on doing work of love and mercy, we can be assured that God will in turn respond, respond mercifully. And so we wait. But this waiting is not passive. It's not calling us to sit still, to do nothing, twiddle our thumbs. Instead, we wait in hope and, and expectation. We lean into that anticipation of we know we have faith in God and God delivering promises. But we're also called to do the work, to be the hands and the feet of Christ in this world, even as we wait to learn and discover when and how God responds. Part of God responding manifests in us even. Some of that delivery manifests in us and others around us and how we engage with God and each other as the Spirit works here and now. And with our neighbors. So using the imagery of the scripture, what are we doing to keep our own lamps lit? That is action in itself, isn't it? How does this notion play out though in our lives today? How do we keep our own lamps lit when we have that individual, that personal relationship with God? And then by extension, figuring out what that means for when we engage in this community as the kingdom of heaven isn't just a bunch of isolated individuals alone. There is individual relationship and growth with God, and then there's more. There's that body of Christ. This passage has been adapted into a spiritual before, which is was to emphasize what God has done and what God is doing. Now, this particular spiritual, uh, based on this passage in Matthew, uh, was meant to give comfort and to warm people's spirits and to help orient themselves and ourselves when we hear it to a place and a time that might be a way to balance a sometimes dark and scary world full of pain and suffering. The spiritual was meant to keep us grounded in the here and now while also keeping watch. And as we live and lean into another way, another kingdom, and that is the kingdom of heaven. That spiritual repeats some of the, the words from the scripture, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what God is doing each and every day. We're called to keep awake. This is not just to divide the earthly realm and the heavenly realm. Instead, it is being awakened to what surrounds us already. The lamps are burning. The light is there, is it not? God is beckoning to us with the light. And we are also called to share that light, as Jesus tells us earlier in Matthew when he delivered the famous Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before others so that they may see your light and give glory to your Father in heaven. That includes what we say and do as people of Christ. It's a life of service and sacrifice, as Jesus demonstrated. It's about our life transformed by our faith in Jesus Christ and through God's grace. Look at the various bridesmaids' responses here in this, in this passage today. One group dedicated life to God and the other waited without preparation. All bridesmaids were waiting. Some waiting with action and focus while the others just waited. Just waited. What does that mean? And where are we in the midst of this conversation? Have you said yes to Jesus? I mean, really, yes? If so, what are you doing about it? Are you growing with God? Are you spending a way and time to devote yourself to God, to grow with God on a personal note, on an individual basis? And do you extend it beyond yourself? 
and serving others? Or do you find yourself sometimes putting all of that stuff on a shelf? You know, you'll get to it later. Life happens. Life gets busy. We have these good expectations and these intentions, but put things on a shelf. Now, each person in this account cannot share that light or the oil, which seems antithetical to what else Jesus has taught us, right? What do you mean don't share? It happened with loaves of bread and fish and so many other events and even in other parables that Jesus taught, the miracles he did, the actions he took, the teachings he, he offered, the parables he told. However, it's this time around where we see a little bit of a different twist. Each person needs to say yes to Jesus, not relying on someone else in this case. It's about your relationship with Jesus and how you then respond accordingly. So that what follows after the yes to what happens after becoming aware of who God is and what Jesus is all about. Each person must respond genuinely and will then have this so-called oil and this light that emanates from us and with God. It's a German theologian, Gerhard Lofink, who said it's sometimes mischaracterized that this is only a solitary issue. Yes, we do need to stop and pause, but uh, Gerhard Lofink said that this passage in particular highlights that it is about the hour not seized. This is the hour. Every hour is the hour. We get to seize. We have the opportunity to seize, to be in more devoted relationship with God and to love our neighbors as ourselves, as God has us. Now our circumstances and our timelines and other details will look likely look different from one to the next. But the common denominator, denominator here is that God seeks us and we are called to respond, each one of us. Yes, of course we can look around, we can, we can learn from each other and help guide others, absolutely. But it comes down to what we do ourselves with our own faith in God as well. And then when we respond individually to what God is doing, we can see how my light and your light and the light of others' lamps can come together in this unfolding kingdom of heaven. It starts when you hear this shout at midnight or any time of day, at some point in your life, the shout at midnight and we pay attention. We listen and we then respond to God. You know, if we say yes to God or no to God or maybe, or maybe we try to sidestep. Any case, no matter what we do next, is still a response to God. So have you heard the shout? Will you listen? Will you become awakened? And how will you respond? May God bless you and be with you. Amen. Our hymn of response is Wait for the Lord, a very short hymn that will be repeated several times. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, keep watch, take heart. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, keep watch, take heart. Wait for the Lord, whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, keep watch, take heart. As we continue in our worship, as we consider, as we, a little bit as we heard today, what we do in our lives as we continue to offer ourselves as we wait, but it's not just waiting passively again. It's not just waiting for the next step for God to act when we just sit idly by. 
So we give ourselves. We know that God gives to us and that we in turn give back to what is God's and in God's kingdom, expanding the kingdom. Part of that means uh, our resources that we have. And so if you would like to donate, tithe or donation to Peace of Christ Church, you may do so. And the address is Peace of Christ Church at 201 East 2nd Street in Natchez, Washington, 98937. But we are also very much mindful that it's it goes beyond that particular type of resource as well. Resources of our gifts and our time and our money and our efforts, our prayers, our presence, our service to be the hands and feet, all of these things working together. So when we think of those things, we bring these before our God as active participants in the kingdom. And we sing that doxology, which again is that honor and glory and praise to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Ever vigilant God, you watch over us every night as we sleep and every day as we rise to do our work, and as we gather at tables to feast on the food you provide. You care for us, and your care is never ceasing. We long to be as vigilant as we strive to be the kingdom-ready church you desire here on earth. Help us keep our eyes and ears open to the needs around us. May we give so generously that when it is time to close our eyes to sleep, we will rest knowing we have been faithful and vigilant in our caring and compassion. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is, We Are God's People. We are God's people, the chosen of the Lord, born of his spirit established by his word our cornerstone is christ alone and strong in him we stand oh let us live transparently and walk heart to heart and hand in hand we are God's loved ones, the bride of Christ our Lord. For we have known it, the love of God outpoured. Now let us learn how to return the gift of love once given. Oh, let us share each joy and care, and live with the zeal that pleases heaven. We are the body of which the Lord is head, called to obey him, now risen from the dead. He wills us be a family diverse, yet truly one. Oh, let us give our hearts to God, and so shall his work on earth be done. We are a temple, the Spirit's dwelling place, formed in great weakness, a cup to hold God's grace. We die alone, for on its own each ember loses fire, yet joined in one the flame burns on to give warmth and light and to inspire. As we go out this week, we know that we encounter God and can see and hear and taste God and see how God is working with others as well as in our hearts. And when we engage in this, we may be unified. So we go forth into this day with the glory of God's anticipation moving through us. With active longing, we await inspiration, clarity of purpose, and new gifts of the Spirit. So go with the light of God, the affirming love of Jesus Christ, and the ever-renewing power of the Holy Spirit forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.